Hey, this is Chuck uh, with Metalwani, and I'm talking to Jensen from Witchery. Jensen, how you doing, man? I'm doing fine, thank you. Awesome. So the new album, I Am Legion, comes out, uh, at least in the States, tomorrow, November 10th. Um, I, I actually yeah, reviewed this album, and I love it. So, so awesome. Um, I read that the band had a goal when you guys were doing this album to get it, uh, you know, to have this album released within a year of In His Infernal Majesty's Service, your last album for Witchery. Um, why was that a goal for the band? Well, uh, historically, I mean, the band is over 20 years old. And when we started out in 96, we were young and, you know, uh, uh, I guess naive or so on, but we, when it, we, we said that we're going to put out two albums every year because that's what our old favorite bands did, like, you know, Kiss or Motorhead or whatever yeah. in the 70s. So we, we said we're going to keep, uh, you know, carry on that tradition. And then um, around 2000, The Haunted uh, took off, uh, Arch Enemy took off, and uh, our uh, drummer joined Opeth, and, you know, they're huge, so... Yeah. There was just no time for us to, to get together and and, uh, and write and do uh, albums anymore. So everything started to kind of, you know, there's four years, uh, 2004, the, the next album. Then it was 2010, uh, Witch Creek. And then 2016, that was the 20th anniversary. So I was thinking, okay, we need to put out an album for that. And I don't know if anyone's <laughs> going to remember us. So we recorded an album for that. And then you know well at least to us people loved it and you know we were overwhelmed but uh we were still not getting any um you know offers to play festivals or tour or anything and i realized that well people they think that there's going to be another six years until the next <laughs> album comes and you know this is just a project man so um that's why we we want to make a, a point out of uh, releasing it within one year so it's like uh, no, tomorrow november 10th is 11 months, two weeks after the release of uh, In His Infernal Majesty's Service. Uh, awesome. And as soon as we announced that we had another album coming out, uh, the offer started to come in. So uh, the plan actually worked out. So that is the reason to why we, we've released them so close in time to each other. Well, it, it's great because I'm I'm happy about it. I was I was stoked when I you know when you guys released uh, in his in his Infernal Majesty service, and then when I saw this was coming out, I was yeah overjoyed. Um, cool. The production on the new album is fantastic. The guitar sound and the drums, you know, have this raw power without being over processed. Um, mm -hmm. Did you guys envision that sound from the start, or was it just kind of a happy accident that happened when you were recording? No, it's a very much a, uh, a conscious decision because I've. Um, I've I've grown somewhat. Uh, what's it called? Metal fatigue. You know the, the newer productions that yeah. bands come out. Everything sounds the same. Everyone is running the same plugins, and you know all oh, this. Uh, I'm using this uh, sample uh, drum library that it sounds fantastic. Bob Rock did it. Blah blah blah. Okay, yeah. Well, yeah, it sounds fantastic. But then everyone uses it, and it just gets you know boring, predictable. And also, if you play to a click. That means that's everyone, because usually, you know, there's some driving force in a band, like maybe uh, Malcolm Young would be the driving force in ACDC, and everyone kind of plays around him, or, you know, a drummer, or so on. So you get this unique band signature timing. Um, but if everyone plays along to a click, that means that everyone has the same f fifth or sixth member. Right. There's always this guy that's he's keeping the or she is keeping the pace and which is the click track and it just makes everything sound the same. So Witcher has always made a point out of recording live and with this album we went into the studio saying that uh, we want uh, the album to sound like um, you know old natural drums. Yeah. And. Yeah, like I actually told uh, Daniel Bergstrom that uh, I wanted him to sound like Van Halen's drums on, you know, 1984. Just something that really, you know, very that people don't hear anymore these days. And uh, we are very happy with the outcome because it might be a silly word, but I want my metal to sound dangerous. Yeah, like Motorhead or something. You know, old Motorhead albums. They, you know, you never knew what was going to happen. Yeah. So maybe we're not, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, as dirty and uh, smelly as Motorhead, but uh, <laughs> we, we still want to have that. You know, you put on a Witchery album, and it, it, you know, we want to um, 
give the the, the feeling that uh, this band means business that, that we love to play music we we try to create something yeah that's what we're trying to do sorry for the long answer no it's it's great man because you know that's the first thing when i was listening to this album the drums really you know i mean the guitars sound great has kind of like that old uh you know, South of Heaven kind of sound, you know, they recorded mm -hmm. those guitars, but mm -hmm. uh, the drums were just so, it was not processed, you know, it was like a, mm -hmm. a, a live mic drum kit that sounded yeah. raw. It was, yeah, so, so cool. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, a little bit more into the album, um, I, I got to know the, the origin for the lyrics, Welcome Night. Um, I love that song, man. What was the inspiration for that? Well, it, Welcome Night is actually, the story is, um, uh, when we recorded uh, uh, In His Air Majesty's Service, um, we thought that we had a singer for that one, uh, it, the singer that was in the band, Caligula, the old ex-singer for Dark Funeral. Yep. But then he developed a medical condition that made it impossible to be in live environments, like even have headphones on for recording purposes. So we got a new uh, singer just two weeks before we entered the studio. So he ended up singing on what we had planned for Caligula. But, you know, he did a great job on that album. But I heard or we heard that he had a lot more potential, like he could do so much more with this voice. So which were being kind of like a, a, a thrash uh, band, I guess, black mm -hmm. metal thrash band. You know, thrash bands always, uh, they focus on the riff, and then right. the, the vocals are kind of an afterthought. But with the Welcome Night, it's the first song that we've ever written where everything supports the lyrics. I mean, there's not much going on in the riff, but it kind of accentuate, it accentuates um, yeah, yeah. the lyrics. And it takes on a, you know, a whole new... Um, dimension that witcher hasn't played before and it, it is actually my favorite song on the album too because it's just new ground for us um yeah yeah, yeah the lyrics that... behind it i'm sorry oh go ahead go ahead yeah the lyrics behind it are kind of you know in the vein of uh, uh jack the ripper but uh we um we chose the year uh 1855 on purpose just to set it um you know in another time from when the, the the ripper things happen in london but you know same kind of victorian foggy london uh, that kind of thing but uh, so we wouldn't be um uh trapped by the kind of the real story so to say yeah yes yeah, so i hear. actually got i actually got a funny question from um a journalist who had done a little digging. Uh -huh. Like, why did you uh, choose 1855? Like, ah, well, I don't know. It's just a good <laughs> number that worked with the lyrics. He said, so it's not because of the devil's footprints that happened in the in England in 1855. And oh, I went, what? <laughs> so, so I had to Google it, and there's actually a thing. There was a great snowfall in the UK, or it, I guess it was England back then, I don't know. Yeah. And uh, there was this thing called the devil's footprints that for miles went on with... Um, Cloven hoofed footprints. <laughs> so yeah, it's crazy. So check it out. It's a pretty fun story. Awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I I kind of wondered when I was listening to the lyric because I love the way that uh, Angus like growls that out. Um, mm -hmm. His his voice on the whole album sounds great, but especially you know that welcome night, and then you have that little intro, you know, uh, where someone else is speaking. You know, um, it just and the the riff itself is just this tension building. It's it's fantastic yeah. song. Yeah, it's, it's, it's kind of a writing, um, uh, what do you call it, like an arrangement that's not typical for us, because, you know, you, we usually start with uh, maybe the chorus, but you open with the opening riff and then a verse, then mm -hmm. chorus, then a verse, then a chorus, you know, the usual kind of stuff. This was, you know, a slow build up, and then there's like a pause, and then it continues, and then you have that spoken word part, which, by the way, is done by Nick Barker, the drummer. Oh. And and then it just kicks off, and then it has that, uh, the you know the the kind of chorus at the end where he really you know screams out the 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 title of the song, and then Mike Weed comes in at the end and does the solo. Yeah, um, that's a, yeah, it's a great solo too. Yeah, so I I love this song. So yeah. Yeah. So um, uh, are there other songs that on the on the new album that you really uh, are proud of or or enjoy playing the most? Well, Old Black and Wing is a fun song because it's, uh, again, it's a step away from uh, being that um, 
you know, thrashy where everything needs to be so tight and everything. I don't mind playing that. I mean, we do that all the time with the Haunted, but mm -hmm. just for Witchery, making it more loose and dangerous, using that word again, but, <laughs> you know, just the more open chords and, you know, maybe a bit more punkish. Yeah. Um, to put some, you know, another dimension into it. So I, I really like that song as well. Cool. So um, you, you're probably aware that most of the, a lot of people in the, the metal community, you know, get obsessed with uh, uh, labels and, you know, for genres and stuff like that. Um, what is your reaction when people refer to Witchery as a black metal band? I don't think it, it's it's entirely true, uh, though. That said, um, having that said, uh, black metal is a bit more forgiving than maybe thrash metal and heavy metal is, uh, because there's so much more you can do within uh, uh, the boundaries of black metal. You you know, atmospheric or you know, very lo-fi or you know, uh, orchestral like Dima Borger or. You know, if you play thrash, it's mainly just thrash. And if you play heavy metal, it's kind of Iron Maiden, Judas Priest. But black metal is pretty um, generous in that perspective that, you know, there's so many different ways of playing it. Uh -huh. But I wouldn't call us a black metal band uh, but because we do play a lot of heavy metal riffs even, uh, you know, a lot of thrash riffs, of course, even death metal riffs. Yeah. Uh, actually, maybe, I mean, there's a song of um, um, Innocent Federal Majesty's Service called Zuruas. That's almost, you know, almost a rock opening, the, the chorus there. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. So, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what to call our, what we play, which is a good thing, I guess. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It's good to be uh, in multiple spots. So, um I saw that Witchery's booked um, to play the 70,000 ton, uh, 70, Tons of Metal Cruise um, to, to kick off 2018. Um, do you get, Have you guys sol solidified any other plans for Witchery to go on tour? Well, we have uh, uh, the European festival season is building up or getting booked right now. So we have uh, a few things that we're going to announce pretty soon. Awesome. Uh, we would love to come back to the U.S., but, you know, it's pretty hard to... to to get back into the U.S. because you know all the visas, the what do you call it, the um, oh. the cost of touring has gone up, and also Century Media doesn't really have uh, there's no record uh, chain stores anymore. Yeah. So it's all independent stores. The sales aren't there. You know, it's well, it's kind of the same everywhere. But we're in Europe, so it's easier for us to move around in Europe. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, we would absolutely love to come back and do another U.S. tour. So. Hopefully, we can work things out so we, we can be back there next year. Yeah, I was going to ask you, who do I need to bribe over here in the States to get you guys over yeah. here? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we've had some of the... Uh, we did a tour, the first tour we ever did in the U.S. was with Witchery, and we opened for um, Emperor. Uh, I mean... That was amazing tour. That was back in '99. I mean, some you know, it was between thousand and two thousand people every night. Awesome. That was great. Great tour. Awesome. So, uh, besides your, you know, your day job, the haunted witchery, you got any other side projects that you're you're working on? Uh, I do a little moonlighting with another band that's uh, uh, touring the U.S. right now. I'm not there, obviously, but mm -hmm. uh, I, I do some work with them. It's it's a little secret, but not too big. You can probably find it online somewhere. Uh, but that's you know, I write everything for for Witchery, and you know, putting out two albums uh, within one year is a lot of work. And also, if the Haunted releases an album in that year as well, so. I haven't had really much time for much else than these um, these two bands. Yeah, and uh, so just to get into The Haunted just a little bit, uh, any plans to bring The Haunted to the United States? Because I know you guys have been, you know, out in the East. And... Yeah, 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 we, um, we did, the uh, last thing we did was with um, At The Gates. We started in Florida and we took the south of uh, the U.S. over to uh, San Francisco. But... Uh, <coughs> Excuse me. We'd love to come back as well. So maybe we could do like a haunted witchery tour. That yeah. happened in two thousand one. So might happen again. There you go. And I and I think uh, at the gates is working on new material. So maybe all three of you can come over. 
Yeah, I think he uh, entered the studio this Sunday, actually. Yeah. actually. So, yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. Um, so, I just have one question, one more question for you. Um, mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite uh, breakfast food? Mm, I'm huge on breakfast. Uh, so, every time we tour the U.S., it's always Denny's and a Grand Slam Slugger or something <laughs> like that. But I, I love uh, fried eggs. You know, omelets, uh -huh. hash browns, yeah, that kind of stuff, yeah. All right, cool, man. I, I eat the amount of food that, you know, people ate 100 years ago, then walked out and got behind the horse and plowed a field or something. <laughs> you know, the, the kind of breakfast that, right. all, you know, yeah, the, you the can big work a whole day on. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Well, Jensen, I, I appreciate you talking with us, man. Oh, I appreciate for your interest in the album. Yeah, it's fantastic. Thanks again.